U.S. President Barack Obama gave his farewell speech to the nation last week where he talked about his accomplishments, his gratitude for the country's support during his eight years in office and the work left to be done. President-elect Donald Trump assumes office on January the 20th. Channel Television's correspondent Maria Bird has more from Washington. President Obama's farewell to America is nothing but historic. He highlights the issues that affect minority groups that call America home. If we're unwilling to invest in the children of immigrants just because they don't look like us, we will diminish the prospects of our own children because those brown kids will represent a larger and larger share of America's workforce. The president also addressed racism, a thorny issue that came up several times during his eight years in office, proffering lasting solutions. So if we're going to be serious about race going forward, we need to uphold laws against discrimination in hiring and in housing and in education and in the criminal justice system. That is what our Constitution and our highest ideals require. But laws alone won't be enough. Hearts must change. They won't change overnight. Social attitudes oftentimes take generations to change. But if our democracy is to work the way it should in this increasingly diverse nation, then each one of us need to try to heed the advice of a great character in American fiction, Atticus Finch, who said, you never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view. There will be much to be remembered of the first African-American president and his family. You made the White House a place that belongs to everybody. And a new generation sets its sights higher because it has you as a role model. So you have made me proud and you have made the country proud. As America closes a chapter in history, this will be much to remember for generations to come. Maria Bird, Channel Television News. Well, as President Obama leaves Washington, a new museum opens here, the National Museum of African American History and Culture. As we hear from Africa 54's Haiti Adams Fitzpatrick, the museum has, has stuck artifacts of the early American slave trade. Here it is. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, we are not the makers of history, we are made by history. We're here at the National Museum of African American History and Culture. This building, 100 years in the making, was designed by David Ajay, an architect with East African roots. But he says he was inspired by the people of West Africa when he designed this building. We're going to take you inside where we will meet John Franklin. He's the director of international programs here at the museum. He's about to take us on a remarkable journey and show us the stories that have made the experience of Africans in America so extraordinary. The museum in great detail chronologically explores the complex story of slavery and freedom. John Franklin, the museum's director of international programs, specializes in the history and traditions of the African diaspora. He says the stories of slavery require the unvarnished truth. The premise of the museum is that you're looking at American history and culture through an African-American perspective and an African-American lens. The journey of slavery in America begins in Africa, where people were snatched from their homes for the brutal transatlantic slave trade. Many, many, many people from all of these regions were taken uh, by the hundreds of thousands, by the millions. We estimate 12 and a half million being brought across the Atlantic between 1500 and 1867. Only 5% of those come to the United States. Approximately a million go to Jamaica, a million to Haiti, a million to Cuba, six million to Brazil. But how captured Africans were taken to the Americas tells its own horrific tale. The imagery is powerful. 
seeing the actual whips and shackles that we use to imprison Africans and traffic them to slavery in the New World. In this exhibit, a great irony about the founding of the United States is laid bare. So on the back wall here you have all of the documents founding America. The Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. So we have Thomas Jefferson here, who's known for having written the Declaration of Independence, but having been a slave owner as well. So he is promoting freedom, but being a slave owner. And behind him, you'll see bricks with the names of some of the 600 people he owned during the course of his life. 35,000 artifacts from around the world were collected for this museum. Here, an auction block where slaves stood to be bought and sold. Nat Turner's Bible. He led a slave rebellion in 1831. And Harriet Tubman Shaw, a former slave herself, Tubman ushered others to freedom on harrowing missions from safe house to safe house on the so-called Underground Railroad. America's economy and its capital were built in part on the backs of African slaves. Where we're standing were plantations before this was decided to be created as a city of Washington. And then the prominent, prominent buildings of the city are built with slave labor. The Capitol uh, and the White House are among those. It took a civil war to bring this chapter of American history to a close. U.S. President Abraham Lincoln declared the slaves to be free in the rebelling states and Congress amended the Constitution to outlaw slavery and ensure that Africans in America could stay. Haiti Adams Fitzpatrick, VOA News, Washington. Well, and that's our show for today. Now, be sure to watch Africa 54 on the VOA website at voaafrica.com. You can find all our shows there and also get the world's biggest news stories around the clock. I'm Vincent McCory in Washington. We look forward to bringing you another show next week. Well, check out our Channel CB website. That's channelcb.com for all our local news and program information anytime, day or night. I'm Jocker Rogers. Thanks for watching. So long. Till next time.